Maya gets emotional on seeing crowd chanting, Pakistan Zindabad, during PSL 2020. Asterisk, I want to add one more important thing, whether we play for different teams, one thing I always witness during PSL matches is that we all gather for Pakistan as a nation, she says. Actress Maya Ali, who was snapped cheering for her team Keta Gladiators recently, has said that whether we play for different teams, one thing she always witnesses during the PSL matches is that we all gather for Pakistan as a nation. The Diari Dil actress took to Instagram and shared some photos clicked during Keta Gladiators and Karachi Kings match in Karachi on Sunday, and wrote, It's not easy to play in front of thousands of people and sometimes under a lot of pressure. I still can't imagine but as a brand ambassador of at Keta Gladiators, I can feel that and yesterday was truly a tough match for both teams but Hush Per Play 4 did it. Congratulations to the whole team of Keta Gladiators, well done. Also I want to add one more important thing, whether we play for different teams, one thing I always witness during the PSL matches is that we all gather for Pakistan as a nation, and I get really emotional to see crowds saying Pakistan Zindabad and that moment makes me feel more proud being Pakistani, she went on. PCBC's no complain over ball changing incident. The Pakistan Cricket Board, PCB, confirmed that match referee Roshan Mahanama has not received an official complaint from Keta Gladiators against Peshawar Zami for changing the condition of the ball during their 22nd February fixture of the HBL Pakistan Super League Week 2020 at the National Stadium on Saturday. As per Article 3.2, close 3rd February 2002 of the HBL PSL 2020 Code of Conduct for Players and Player Support Personnel, Official complaint has to be filed by the team manager and submitted to the match referee within 48 hours from the end of the match. However, no complaint has been filed and the 48-hour window is now closed, a PCB spokesman said. PCB chief executive Wasim Khan said, We are aware that a statement on changing the condition of the ball has been made without providing any concrete evidence or lodging a formal complaint through the correctly stated procedure. In this case, this should have been submitted to the match referee by 6 p.m. on Monday, 24 February. Such irresponsible statements without formal follow-up will only affect the integrity of the event and cast doubts on international cricketers, and, as such, I request the players to use caution and show responsibility. He said, we have an excellent panel of umpires who, as per the playing conditions, are carrying out due diligence during matches. If they will spot any artificial or unnatural interference with the ball, they will act as per the code. I request all participants to uphold the spirit of the game and to focus solely on cricket. This is the first complete HBL PSL 2020 taking place in Pakistan and like every Pakistan cricket fan, we wish this to be a memorable 32 days for all the right reasons. Bulkot facility up and running ahead of 2019 strike anniversary. India had struck the Balko terror camp after Pulwama terror attack. The camp was targeted by IAF's Mirage 2000 aircraft using Israeli-built spice bombs on 26 February 2019. The Balko camp at the center of February 2019 airstrikes have undergone a repair ahead of the first anniversary of the Indian Air Force bombings. Analysis of open-source high-resolution satellite imagery by India Today TV has identified structural changes in parts of the camp. Some of the changes are time-stamped to third week of December 2019. Spread over one acre of land at Jabba in Khyabar Pakhtantwa province, the jayesh e muhammad Jaim, camp also doubled down as a madrasa. The camp was targeted by IAF's Mirage 2000 aircraft using Israeli-built spice bombs on 26 February 2019. An examination of satellite imagery reveals Obscured signs of modifications including measurable change in perimeter of some structures and roofs of this camp. The revamp In one of the alterations, a comparatively smaller structure in the north side of the large hall has shrunk from its original size. The auxiliary building, which covered an area of approximately 201 square meters in February 2019, only covers an area of 128 square meters as on December 2019, according to measurement of high-resolution satellite images. 
the structure has also visibly lost parts of its northeast and southwest sides. The moving roof of Mujahid Hostel. The semi-square structure with a pyramid-hipped rooftop in the northern part of the camp was identified as Mujahid Hostel during the Indian Air Force strikes. This hall was touted to house most of the jayesh e muhammad Kadri during the late night strike. Analysis of imagery showed that northwest corner of the hostel roof was disarranged in the first week of December, however no such disarrangement was seen in the third week of December. The main hall. The large main hall at the west side of the area has shown minute changes. The hall is covered by a large hipped roof. A measurement of the width of the roof on three different times resulted into two different results. In February, the width of the roof stood at approximately 35 meters, however it shrunk to 32 meters in first week of December. However, roof's width returned back to its original size in the third week of December 2019. This could be due to internal repairs and change in elevation angle or height inside the large hall. The cover-up after the Indian Air Force strike in February, the Pakistani military seized the access to the madrasa for foreign journalists. The media wing of the Pakistani Military Inter-Services Public Relations, ISPR, took a delegation of foreign journalists and diplomats to Balkot after a questionable gap of more than 40 days. India has consistently maintained that the Balkot strike was a successful operation where IAF jets hit most of the targets and Pakistan managed to keep these damages hidden by blocking access to this place for over six weeks. Air Chief Marshal RKS Bhadoria, Balkot strike redefined use of air power towards meeting national objective. Air Chief Marshal RKS Bhadoria became the Indian Air Force Chief on 30th September 2019. Months after the IAF launched air strikes at Balkot, Pakistan. On the occasion of the first anniversary of the Balkot air strikes, ACM Bhadoria speaks with Sushant Singh. Excerpts. One year after the Balkot strike and subsequent air operations, how do you look back at the events from February 2019 till now? The Balkot air strike redefined the use of air power towards meeting the national objective and has changed the paradigm of subconventional action and response in the subcontinent. The event itself, and the subsequent air operations on 27 February 2019, have remained in public attention with the battle of narratives spreading out to the masses over all forms of media. But the fact remains that the Balkot air strikes were the most significant air action by the IAF in over four decades, when our fighters penetrated deep into Pakistan airspace, executed a precise attack on the terror camp and returned home unchallenged. Over the last year, we have continued to focus on our operational training and readiness, induction of enhanced BVR, beyond visual range, missiles, stand of weapon capability and upgradation of secure communications. We have looked closely at our modernization and acquisition plans for prioritization in line with the changing threat scenario. What were the big lessons from Balkot? How will it impact planning for future missions? The Balkot strikes clearly demonstrated the IAF's level of operational preparedness and capability. The package was precisely coordinated and comprised combat aircraft and enablers from many bases across the country. The men and women concerned performed their tasks admirably under challenging conditions which is a testimony to their planning and training. This complex plan was conceived and executed in full secrecy and the mission went unchallenged even when PAF was on full alert. As in any military action, there were several lessons learned which have been implemented in terms of capability enhancement and future plans. We have instituted measures covering the entire spectrum of induction of new capability, operational training and tactics, which will further enhance the IAF's operational capability to undertake any such mission at short notice. How do you plan to realistically overcome the challenge of shortage of fighter aircraft, considering the state of funds allocated for capital acquisition and IAF's committed liabilities? We are aware of the reducing strength of combat platforms for some time now. We have already put into place measures to overcome the shortfalls by a combination of capacity and capability enhancements. We have instituted a series of midlife upgrades and weapons integrations on legacy platforms. The LCAMK-1A and MRFA should serve to halt the reducing trend, 
and LCAMK2 will thereafter boost the numbers once the upgraded platforms come to the end of their life cycles. These inductions will be spread over a number of years which will help spread out the funding, as has been alluded to by the CDS. Are there plans for buying more AVAX and mid-air refuelers, better weaponry for Su-30 and better air defense capability, with reports of S-400 delivery being delayed? We have plans in place for additional AVAX, both through the acquisition and development routes. We are also looking at various possibilities to enhance our refueling capability, and these should be formalized soon. The Su-30 upgrade is on our priority list. The S-400 is not delayed as has been reported, but the program delivery schedule is being optimized in coordination with the Russian side to enable us to operationalize the weapon system quicker. How prepared is IAF for the challenges on the northern borders? Any special plans in the offing? The IAF, as does any armed force, continues to monitor threats and challenges across the geographical and strategic space that we operate in. With specific reference to our northern borders we are aware that matching numbers is a difficult proposition but we are adequately prepared. We are focusing on high-tech weapons, force enablers along with emphasis on operational training. Integrated theta commands are in news, with CDS having it in charter, while IAF has long held that the whole of India is one theta. How will this be resolved? There is no doubt that our current setup, while time-tested, is old and there is room for improvement. However, as the CDS has brought out, we need to guard against blindly following models adopted by different countries in a change for changes sake approach. We need to clearly understand our unique situation, our resources, and develop solutions which fit our needs and requirements. There is a clear case to enhance jointness at the operational level. Several studies are underway to resolve the practical issues of how this is to translate into deliverable and achievable actions on the ground. Our air power resources are highly inadequate to permit fragmentation into smaller theatres. We are studying methods to create joint structures and yet retain the ability to bring to bear the maximum possible firepower from air at the desired point of delivery across our entire national AOR, area of responsibility, in the shortest possible time. Donald Trump's India visit aimed at deepening strategic ties, White House. Underlining that it was the first official visit of the US President to India, the White House said both countries enjoyed a long-standing trade relationship, exceeding USD 142 billion in 2018 alone. Hours after President Donald Trump concluded his whirlwind 36-hour tour of India, the White House late on Tuesday issued a statement saying the visit aimed at deepening the strategic partnership between both nations. The United States and India benefit from strong economic ties that advance prosperity, investment and job creation in both countries, the White House said in a statement titled, President Donald J. Trump is strengthening our strategic partnership with India. Underlining that it was the first official visit of the US President to India, the White House said both countries enjoyed a long-standing trade relationship, exceeding USD 142 billion in 2018 alone. India is a growing destination for American energy exports, it said, adding that during President Trump's Kenya, energy exports to India have grown substantially, generating billions of dollars in revenue. In India, ExxonMobil signed a deal to further improve India's natural gas distribution network so that the country can accept even more American LNG exports, it said. The White House said the US President and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi are working towards a trade pact that reflects the full potential of the economic partnership between both nations. The United States and India are committed to investing in sustainable, transparent, quality infrastructure in the region, it said. According to the White House, the two nations are deepening their security relationship and helping to promote a free and open Indo-Pacific region. The United States is working closely with India to combat terrorism, confront global drug trafficking and promote a free and open Indo-Pacific, it said. President Trump and Prime Minister Modi are calling on other countries in the region to take steps to counter terrorism. The United States-India defense cooperation contributes to the prosperity and security of the entire Indo-Pacific region, it said. During his visit, 
Trump spoke about the importance of the United States-India relationship before a crowd of more than 110,000 people at the Ahmedabad's Motera Stadium, the White House said, adding that he had the privilege of visiting some of India's cherished cultural sites, including the Taj Mahal in Agra. During the U.S. president's visit, India announced it will procure military equipment, including Apache and MH-60R helicopters, worth over 3 U.S. dollars billion. Trump and Modi also discussed the importance of building secure 5G systems to promote a trusted networking future, the White House said.